How you set up your charcoal is one of the most important things to get right, as the wrong setup can lead to constantly having to top up your charcoal, wild temperature swings, and food getting ruined. In this experiment, we're gonna look at six different charcoal setups, touching on when to use each one, looking at how they burn, so you can see what to expect without having to do this at home. So charcoal setups fall into two categories. You've got direct and indirect heat setups. In this video, we'll look at a mixture of direct, indirect, and hybrid setups, but first we're gonna start with a popular indirect method called the snake method. So as the name suggests, we're gonna arrange the charcoal around the edge of the charcoal basket in the shape of a snake, leaving a little gap for where we're gonna drop our hot charcoal, which is then gonna light this like a fuse. Now you've got a few options here. You can do a, a single wall of charcoal. You can do a double wall if you want it to burn hotter and for longer. You can add some wood chunks along the way on top of the charcoal, just add some wood smoke flavor to what you're cooking. And another thing you can play around with is whether you want this to be a kind of a double-ended fuse that burns in both directions or whether you want it to be a single fuse that burns all the way around. It's not gonna make a huge difference, but if you need to have something with a very even cooking, you don't wanna be moving your meat around a lot and you want the heat to come from both sides, you may want to have a kind of a double-ended fuse that burns in both directions. But the compromise there is it's probably not gonna last as long as you're burning your charcoal faster. So because each briquette is lighting the next one in the chain, we get a really stable temperature, making this a good setup for long cooks when we need a low, stable temperature and where we don't want to be constantly topping up our charcoal. So I like to use this for things like pulled pork, ribs, brisket, any low and slow cooks really. The downside with this method is that because we're lighting the charcoal as we go, when charcoal first lights, it gives off a kind of a thick, nasty tasting white smoke. It's not the end of the world and you can somewhat offset it by using good quality briquettes and ensuring you've got good airflow, but it is a limitation with this approach. So next we've got the two zone setup. This is probably the most popular charcoal setup. This is where you dump your hot coals to one side of the grill, giving you a nice hot direct zone and a cooler indirect zone. This setup is really great because it allows you to do reverse searing. You can bring your meat up to temperature on the indirect zone, draw out all the moisture, and then finish it off by giving it a sear on the direct hot zone. So really good if you're doing steaks where you wanna get a nice crust, or barbecue chicken if you wanna get crispy skin. So here we got a three zone setup where you stack your charcoal high at the back and taper it down so you have a high, medium, and low heat cooking zone. This is good for situations where you just need options and flexibility. Perhaps you're cooking lots of different types of meat or you don't know what you're gonna be cooking and things are gonna be ready at different times. And you just need a setup that's gonna work for lots of different scenarios. So here we got a split setup. This is where you pour your hot charcoal on either side of the grill, leaving a channel down the middle. You can add a water pan in here if you like. This is gonna give you two direct cooking zones and an indirect cooking zone. So I really like to use this setup for things like roasting joints, like pork loin or beef tenderloin, where you probably wanna cook it indirectly, but you want the heat to come evenly from both sides. Now, if you're using a Weber kettle, you can buy baskets to, to put the charcoal in. If you have a really old Weber kettle, you might have the, the kind of old rails that keep the charcoal in place. Or another little hack you can use is to take a couple of logs and just build a little wall, and that's gonna work just as effectively uh, to keep the charcoal all in place. So next we've got the minion method. This begins by pouring a full chimney of unlit charcoal into the charcoal basket. You can bury some wood chunks in there, a minion if you've got one. Then we're gonna pour half a chimney of hot coal on top of that, which is then gonna light the rest of the charcoal. So the reason this is called the minion method sadly has nothing to do with minions. It's named after Jim Minion, who the morning of a competition bought a bullet smoker like this one, the Weber Smoky Mountain. He didn't read the instructions, completely winged how to light it, came up with this method, which worked incredibly well. He took home first and second place in chicken and ribs that day. Lots of people started replicating the method and the rest is history. So similar to the snake method, this is a really good setup for long cooks where we need a stable temperature. As you can pretty much set and forget it and you'll usually get maybe 10 to 16 hours out of it depending on what charcoal you're using. Now, also similar to the snake method, the downside with this method is that we're lighting charcoal as we go. So we do get some of that thick white smoke, but frankly, if Jim Minion can get first and second place in a competition out of it, I don't think we need to worry about it if we're using good charcoal. So before we look at the Vortex method and compare the temperature data head to head, if you enjoy these kind of experiments, remember to subscribe to the channel below to get a weekly video like this one. Okay, so lastly, we've got the Vortex method. This uses a cone to create a really hot funnel of heat that's gonna hit the lid of the barbecue and then bounce back, giving you both direct and indirect heat. Now you can use this for searing. I'm pretty much searing my hand right now, but probably the most common use for this setup is for cooking wings. You'll often see a ring of wings around the outside of the Vortex. Really good way of cooking them indirectly. But let's have a look and see how all these methods compare head to head on the temperature graphs. So the temperature data confirms that if we're cooking low and slow, the snake or minion methods give us the longest and most stable burns. Whereas if we're cooking hot and fast, pretty hard to beat the two zone setup or the vortex method, both of which gave us about 100 to 150 degree difference between the direct and indirect sides. So you can see from the temperature graphs that the way you set up your charcoal has a huge impact on how long the charcoal lasts and the temperature you get. But there are two other things that have just as much impact. The first of which is the charcoal you use. 
In this experiment, I tested seven different types of charcoal, including a mixture of lump charcoal and briquettes, to work out what charcoal is best based on what we're cooking. The second thing is how you set up your vents. And in this experiment, I tested three different vent configurations to work out how that affects the burn time and the temperature that you get.